and we are talking this hour about Silicon Valley's new gimmick to stay alive. Uh, these people are afraid of dying. They have got so much off of our backs forward, because they've been forward. collecting information and giving it to these corporations <laughs> so they can sell us garbage. And that's what we've been doing and the feds and the IMF and everybody just stripping off the and earth. These people want to hide, you know? They feel real guilty. And they think if they can only just live forever, that somehow they can make up for their shame. Tom? Perhaps permanently extending life by means being death optional. Lots of big names in Silicon Valley looking at this and the way you look at any other kind of technical challenge. Here's a little tip from a couple years back. The website in Dublin, Ireland, billionaire co-founder of PayPal, Peter Thiel, was asked about what in technology was exciting him. His answer? Solving aging. The big theme that I think we've been spending more on is solving the question of aging. Is can we treat aging itself like a disease that can be uh, slowed or possibly reversed? And, um, and I think we've not even scratched the surface in asking questions about it. Because uh, it's, it's very underexplored. What causes people to age? Why does it happen? What can you do about it? Peter Thiel there, and he's not the only one by any means in Silicon Valley who is, uh, I think, it's obsessed with this issue. They've got a lot of money, they've got a lot of brain power, a lot of it's being focused on reversing aging or making death. Optional. Will we see Peter Thiel and Google founders living to be 150, 200, 300, more? Uh, Teddy Bowers involved here too. Uh, you've got a last ball, Jeff Bezos and Peter Thiel got involved with a company called Unity. Welcome, we're looking at aging and longevity. Some players from the Pentagon have been working on this project for many decades, handing the operations over to the private corporations to disguise the identity of those behind it. There are some new feces involved. These are the only feces that we know at the moment. This man right here is an expert. He's been working with NASA because that's where the uh, taxpayer money, money goes to to make sure that these operations and projects get finalized for the elite. Sir, what is it that you are working on? Well, we've been studying aging for the last 20 years and we've been trying to figure out what it is that makes us grow old and what you do to actually reverse that. And we found some interesting molecules that we think have the capacity to reverse aging in people, but we didn't actually expect it that we would have applications for NASA, but NASA put out a request for a uh, competition on how do we protect astronauts going to Mars. And we need to do that because they're hit with cosmic radiation and they'll eventually get cancer and other aging effects. Now, if you position this operation as consistent with the newest research on DNA, this is a real opportunity to take the money. Well, it is, and it's actually one of the biggest problems on a Mars mission. It hasn't yet been solved. Uh, we, we know how to get to Mars with rockets. Uh, with, uh, that technology pretty much exists. The problem is that you need to shield a spacecraft with about two feet of lead or 10 meters of water which is just not going to happen, it's too heavy, for example. So what we've decided to, to attempt is instead of shielding the spacecraft, we can shield the genome. And that's the technology that we're talking about, this NAD molecule boosts the body's ability to repair DNA and fight the effects of aging that is ex that are accelerated on the way to Mars because of the cosmic radiation. Well, tell us, how exactly are you going to get the public to believe that you're going to be doing this for their interests? As we know this nowadays, as soon as you convince the public that it's, it's for good for them, then, um, you know, uh, the, the, you know it, the, the shit flies. Uh, but the, it, this is something that, obviously, it's going to cost millions of dollars if you want to live a couple of years longer, which is fine for the elite because they print the money. But uh, how are you going to get the public? I mean, what, what is the thought process behind the business plan? Well, there are, the way to think about this is that our bodies are very good at healing themselves, but uh, that goes down as we get older. And we, we all know this. There are some people who live very long and some people will never get sick until very late. We're trying to find out what's behind that. And what we've discovered as a people um, is that there are protective mechanisms in ourselves that we can take into action somewhat by exercising and staying thin. But we've actually discovered that there are, there are ways that we could actually use a pill to jump these uh, even better than exercise and diet onto a one. Tell us about the biological process. Uh, 
What, how are you going to link this to the DNA so that the people will take the brain chip thinking that it may result in them living longer? So AD is a molecule that if you want to buy the enhanced level, it's probably the most important molecule you've ever read about. It was discovered in Germans about 100 years ago, and it's essential for all chemical, well, most chemical reactions in the body to, to be efficient. We doubt it would be given 30 seconds, but what's been really interesting over the last few years is the discovery that this molecule AD is essential for health as well, and seems to control uh, our longevity as well. And as we get older, the problem is that our bodies make less and less of it. By the time you're 50, you have about half the levels you once had in your 20s. And what we're working on now is, how do we replenish that NAD molecule so that the body rejuvenates and is, is as healthy as it, it was when you were in your teens or 20s? But well, this sounds like something that the public would, would buy into. You, you're on the inside of the communication channels and therefore you disperse the propaganda to the vulnerable populations. Uh, the uh, uh, educational uh, systems are now acquiring new technology to uh, 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 further uh, 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 make the subjects dependent on this antichrist called the artificial intelligence. Tell us more about the business plan itself. Give us a sense of the uh, time frame and, and a little more about the business. Well, we've been interested in the caffeine in the last few days and years. Uh, we certainly, it seems like it's just around the corner. And it's true that we are aiming for the next six months to have our first safety trials, actually here at Boston. And uh, we've been working diligently for the last four years here at Boston um, at a local company called Eden Rock Pharma. And this company has been developing molecules that are safe and, and hopefully effective in people. And, and we know pretty surely, hopefully within the next year, if we're on the right track. That doesn't mean that we'll have be able to give it away yet. Um, we're in cells, we still have a number of years to go, but I can see within the next five years that we could potentially have a drug that your doctor has described. The one disease, say diabetes, but also would protect you against the five other major causes of death and therefore extend your healthy lifespan. Give me some serious Sorry. prospects. Please. Well, I'm not more or less. I don't think, at least for the possible future, that we're going to be living forever. Um, but I do see that it, it's not that difficult, at least based on our animal studies, to extend the lifespan by 5 or 10%, which is a big deal. Extending the lifespan of the United States population by just three years would save about $7 trillion in the long run. You know, that people are so willing to pay everything they have and work their whole lives just to live for another day. You'd think they would just live while they were living and not have to work to death. But this is how people like your companies get rich. Do you know what I'm saying or do you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Well, Teddy, yes, exactly. So you're, you're getting to the point, which is that we're not just talking about keeping people around for longer. It would be the people who would be in their 90s, reaching 100, and still be productive members of society like they were when they were in their 30s and 40s. Being able to play tennis, look after great grandkids. And so it's, it's not about keeping people in nursing homes for longer. It's actually about it's the opposite. It's keeping people out of nursing homes and dying relatively quickly and hopefully painlessly as well. And we've got another fellow in here who had just joined the conversation. He is working as an agent for another company hiding Ratchild's dollars. And this fellow has some more information. So what is the mindset behind this project? The yeah, mindset, I would say, is in a sense that finally, uh, maybe even in the last five years, um, solving death, or at least, I mean, obviously, as Dan mentioned, there's there's two ways to go. There's sort of the uh, idea of increasing our health span, making us live longer, healthier lives, but still with an endpoint. Um, and then there's the people, many of them come from the tech world, who think actually, why do we need to have an endpoint? Why can't we just go on forever? Wouldn't that be better all around? Um, and that idea, which is, you know, it's always seemed to be around science fiction, I think has become something that I think we're still not people until that I think is now achievable, although obviously extremely difficult. And I think in the last five years, I feel like it's become something that's not only achievable in a theoretical way, but actually fundable. Uh, which is a big difference. You can put your money behind it and expect to see a return at some point down the line. A uh, return was financial and, of course, in terms of being around forever to enjoy it. Um, and that's an interesting and exciting mindset. It's also one that uh, many of the scientists in the field are nervous about because they think it's a kind of overpromise and they think they really can't deliver it. Well, you know, I'm curious to know now, who are the rat childs using as their uh, um, uh, principal face? Uh, let, Give us uh, some insight into some of the feces involved. The, the main player in the field um, is a, uh, an offshoot of Google or Alphabet, a parent company uh, called Calico, which is a California oil company, which was funded in 2013 with a billion dollars in funding. Um, it was basically the brainchild of uh, Aaron Bill Maris, who was the head of Google Ventures, their sort of funding arm, and he thought his father had died um, of brain death when he was in his 20s, and it had a profound effect on him, and he thought, why do we have to die? 
I'm a little question we all ask ourselves when someone close to us does die. And he uh, didn't just have the question we all have, he had, he had access to lots of money and smart people, so he went to the founders of Google and, and posed the same question to them. One of the founders, Sergey Brin, has a, a gene variant that predisposes him to Parkinson's disease. So he was like, that's a great question. And Larry Page, the other co-founder, said, terrific. Go to it. And they founded this company. Um, and they're doing a lot of research that they were very reluctant to tell me anything about. Um, but uh, they're extremely secretive. But the, 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 the fact of, uh, simply the fact that they Google announced this, we're going to solve death, billion dollars, it's a Google thing, kind of gave it, uh, it increased the fundability thing that I talked about earlier. There's a lot of other companies that are starting and looking at various things like parabiosis, which is um, heterochronic parabiosis, which is often done in mice now is uh, hooking up essentially surgically an old mouse and a young mouse and when you do that after a matter of weeks the uh, old mouse gets younger and the young mouse gets older so Van Valley is facing the same frustration with you know the fact that uh, mice are human and humans are incredibly complicated well i do not foresee that i will be a prospective client yet let us know how is this something that you're going to get the public to buy into so that you can get the cash to get the project done. They have it, and, and to your point earlier, I think they, uh, you know, there's a, there's a kind of like racing and exciting optimism about the idea of like, you know, since death is fundamentally something determined for us, you know, depending on the world you buy, God or evolution, you know, it is something we can tamper with, we can change, we can push back against. And, I always find it funny, so I was, when I was reporting the piece, I talked to a lot of my friends and said, do you want to live forever? Just a casual conversation starter. Most people instantly said no. They're like, yeah, I'd live forever, why not? And I would say, well, in 1900, the average lifespan was around 30 years. You know, are you opposed to all the changes that we made since then? Well, I was to live to 70 or 80 or 90. Yeah, you oppose vaccination. Well, some people obviously do, but most people don't. You oppose sanitation. Um, you oppose better dental care. I mean, people are favorable of those things, and this is really just a question of that. And again, what are, uh, give us some, tell us about some of the feces involved in this Pentagon-based operation. It's a great question because I, I mean, and, and if you can get them on the phone, they'll, they'll uh, refuse comment. Um, <laughs> but uh, they just really don't talk about it. My sense is it was founded by someone who was an immortalist, basically Bill Maris. Uh, he didn't exactly found it, but he was the guy that was behind it. The man I mentioned, uh, he wants us to live forever, and he told me, like, wouldn't it be a shame if, you know, I died a week before we figured this thing out? And that's maybe something to think about. I think most of the people who Google, um, Calico has hired the CEO, and they're the leading scientists are all people who fall into the health span category. So that, it's a little bit of a perhaps bait and switch where it seems to be working more on trying to extend our life healthily from what I can gather than the idea of coming up with some magical all-encompassing solution that will enable, enable us to live forever. But you could argue that, and there's a, there's a guy named Aubrey Duclay in Silicon Valley who does argue that if we can simply buy ourselves 30 more years, if we can make enough small innovations, uh, I mean small to medium-sized innovations, and, and we get to sort of an average lifespan of 120, 130, then in that time we'll have enough other advances that we can keep pushing that back and in fact they'll start growing younger every year rather than older and older what he calls longevity escape velocity. Now let's listen into a British agent tell us about the operation in terms of getting the microchip to people because of course the uh, the idea that DNA is going to be altered is of silly at uh, the, the least uh, the, to think that the uh, public will continue to believe that line uh, that this man is, is coming straight out with it. Aging is not a phenomenon of biology really at all. It's a phenomenon of physics which is to say it's the same process in the human body or in any other living organism than it is in a car or an aeroplane or any other machine with moving parts, whether or not it's alive. It's the accumulation of damage that the machine does to itself throughout its operation as a side effect of the normal operation of the machine. You're saying that, that this is part of human evolution, that the, the, the uh, British would take civilizations into slavery and then reap the benefits and turn around and stick a microchip back into those same people. Um, the, that's a sort of negative way of looking at it. I think the, the more positive, optimistic way of looking at it is that uh, a lot of people in tech, uh, they sort of view the human body in a different way than most scientists do. They find a tendency to have a biological substrate, um, an extremely complex system, as David was mentioning earlier, you know, you, 
you here's a here's a potentially exciting treatment that we have to do clinical trials and we'll obviously give you guys different side effects reverses that was happens. Um in one sec look at that and say no actually let's look at the body more as a <clears throat> as a technological substrate, something that's almost like a computer operating system that we can upgrade it and we can apply new apps to and we can treat it as uh, something that's subject to exponential curves rather than linear curves. Um, and maybe, you know, we upload our brains into the cloud and maybe we, uh, you know, have chief consciousness in another body that our robot avatar or something. We don't have to hang around in our, you know, sad purposes forever. Um, and that's an interesting way of looking at it. It poses a number of uh, <laughs> technological hurdles, but it's an interesting sort of theoretical way of looking at it. It's a big divide between whether people want to see us, you know, simply having compressed morbidity uh, or what they want us to prefer. Uh, let's go ahead and get a, another opinion from a, uh, another employee from the same company. Uh, uh, what, what, what are you thinking? Well, you know, actually, no one has ordained evolution. Why don't we take charge of evolution? Why don't we become the master uh, technician behind evolution and redesign ourselves to get rid of some of the problems? Buddy, this is something that has been uh, in, in linked with paganism uh, for thousands of years uh, people like uh, the guy uh, you spoke about Peter Thiel uh, he is not only a homosexual gay he is uh, been uh, uh, indicated in uh, uh, sacrificing humans for blood uh, talk a little bit about this you would have that phrase, it's a little bit vague whether he's actually still has ever injected himself with the blood of the young or some people would say the young virgins. Uh, that he hasn't acknowledged he's ever actually done that, but he's very interested in doing it. Um, he certainly did acknowledge he was using human growth hormone for a while, but um, I think he's no longer doing that. He's definitely interested in you know, things he can, he can use, he can use for himself. Um, whether or not he's doing, you know, going out to the backyard and, and draining young virgins uh, is a matter for uh, public speculation, but yeah, no, you can, if you want, you can now pay the eight thousand dollars and go to a clinic in Monterey, California, and get young blood plasma, um, which is just you know the blood of young people that uh, that you can get injected. Uh. I am thrilled to talk to you. It's a really interesting program. Um, my first thought is that to me it's a dreadful nightmare to think of people living forever and the ultimate narcissism. I'm a healthy 76-year-old 